Hello everyone, uh, I think this is the third video in the series, so we're getting fairly close to the end. I guess uh, this is the halfway point exactly, because I think there should be five videos in total when I'm finished, although don't quote me on that, I'm still recording and it's 3 a.m., so who knows how long this is going to go, but this, uh, like I said, is the third video for the in the series of tutorials on Maze Magician 4.0.0 and this is going to cover plaza generation. Now this should be the only fluid point. Things may change a little bit so if I come up with a 4.0.1 or 4.1.0 I may have tweaked the plaza system a little bit but for all intents and purposes it will remain the same but it is the most subject to change since it's so new and I haven't received any public feedback on it yet. This is actually the, the feature that got me to revisit this inspector and to mess around with the saving and loading, which I'll talk about in another video. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Just because uh, for new users, you're not going to have to know about what used to be here. Um, there's also the older videos up on YouTube you can look up if you want to know more about the old saving and loading system. But anyway, back to task. So like everything else, you enable the feature you'll notice that there's a number of plazas option here and just for a moment I want to talk about the word plaza basically I'm using that as a catch-all for any predefined space in the maze and that's because it breaks down all the walls and looks like a plaza until you add details to it till you add your flower gardens and benches and fountains and whatever else you want to have in such a space or a vendor uh, that's selling items for your player whatever you want to put so plaza is just kind of my catch-all term it's what I use in in here in the documentation in the code so uh, that's all it's referring to is these predefined spaces number of plazas so I'm, I'm picking 13 and uh, that means I'm gonna try to place 13 plazas throughout the maze it doesn't mean I'm gonna get 13 I may only get seven and the reason for that is that you don't want two plazas to intersect if the benches from one plaza are intersecting the fountain from another it looks pretty nasty so every time a plaza is attempted to be placed there's a little check that's done. If there's an intersection, it may or may not try to place it again, and that's where this placement attempts come in. Uh, for every number greater than one, you'll get another attempt to place that plaza somewhere else within the maze. So at one, the first time it fails, it quits and skips over it, which means you're less likely to get more than a handful of plazas placed throughout the maze. At 100, it's going to try a lot harder to find a place for that plaza, so you're going to get closer to this magic number that you set here. And all that happens every time it tries to place a plaza, it picks something randomly from this array. Right now we have nothing in it. I'm just going to make one because I'm going to show you actually how to make a plaza, the easiest way to make it. You can either make them by hand, uh, which is hard and difficult, and that's what I did at first, and it, I don't recommend it. <laughs> but um, I'm going to show you an easier way to make sure that everything's placed where it should be. And the first step to that process is to just create an empty object. We can call it uh, test plaza, and it's going to need the plaza prefab component. This is where you're you're going to store a, a width and a length. So, in my case, I'm going to make it 10 by 10, and this is this is useful because this will be turned into a prefab. So you can drop the same garden into multiple maze generators. You don't have to set it up every time in the generator itself. You can just save these off in a folder somewhere and use them as needed. Height, we're not going to have to mess with at all if we use this method. If we were to create a little uh, garden scene in 3ds Max and import it into Unity uh, pre-built and pre-put together, then we might have to use this height value, which is just going to lift everything up off the ground or sink it down into the ground, depending on what we need after generation. Normally, you get a random position. If you use a fixed position, you can specify coordinates for the bottom left portion of the plaza. So I'm going to use 1-1 one, one because it's the easiest uh, to set up a plaza with. But you could put something in the center, you know, a reward for your players to get to or a rest stop. You could even place, you know, five different things throughout the maze. And something else that happens when you use a fixed position is that this particular plaza will only be placed once in the maze. That's because you don't need a stack of 10 campfires, you know, in the center of the maze. Um, if it's been placed once, an internal flag is set, and it can't be placed again. Only if you're using this fixed position uh, check mark. 
So now that we have all this set up, I'm just going to drag this into my my mess of prefabs here and we can delete it from the scene. And then in the maze generator, we can fill that in there. And we only have one plaza and it's in a fixed position. So even though I've set 13 here, I should only get one plaza right there when I generate the maze. Now, if I open up the maze, all the plazas will end up at the top. And you can see that the pivot point is down here in the uh, the bottom left of the maze here, just just touching the, the floor tile, the top of the floor tile. So the reason I did it this way is because now we can create, you know, uh, whatever 3D cubes and things like that we want and set them as children of this test plaza. You might want to do it with a smaller maze so it's a little bit easier to uh, <laughs> to drag it up here and set it as a child. But after we've set up what we want in this in this space here if i take this plaza that i've pre-built just pretend it was like a time lapse video i guess i should set that same fixed position hey basically what i would have done as I would have set up my little plaza in here, I would have set up my scene. The other one was 10 by 10, so it was, it was a bit bigger. I set up my little scene and set them all as children of this, this plaza and then drag it in here to create a prefab. And this pre exact prefab that has the plaza prefab script and everything on it is the same thing we set up before. So that's an easy way to make sure that everything lines up nicely and is placed where you want it to. And another thing to note is that the orientation will always be the same, though... Uh, Z and X and Y will always line up with uh, with whatever you have here in your prefabs. You'll notice this one is not rotated at all. But as soon as I take this and I rotate it 90 degrees, if we regenerate the maze, you'll see that this has been rotated 90 degrees. So it's consistent from the prefab to the maze if you need to put something on an angle or if you need to flip it upright or whatever you need to do but it will always be placed in that bottom left corner so keep that in mind that's why it's generally easiest if you just don't rotate it at all place your prefabs or place your objects drag them as children of the plaza and then create your prefab out of that an easier way to do it than having an empty object in space and creating your little scene and then trying to figure out how to line it up properly <clears throat> after the fact. And if we go back to this prefab, get rid of that rotation and get rid of that so we can get all 13 that we wanted, we can generate the maze. And there's quite a few of them. We might, Because of the size of the maze, we might have actually gotten all 13. Uh, you can count them. I'm not going to bother. And they're all placed randomly throughout the maze. You see these two are, are touching, but they're not intersecting. So if you do want a little bit of a buffer, I recommend just generating multiple times or putting less plazas in or putting in fixed plazas so you can get a nice symmetrical uh, pattern within the maze. Any of those options. It's fairly flexible, and I'm really looking for feedback on this, on this uh, particular feature. I know it was requested before and I just didn't have time to get to it, especially with the daunting task of integrating it into the old saving and loading system. So I've, uh, I've got it in now and I'm looking for, for ways to improve it. I know there are a few things that I'm already planning on changing a little bit, but the basic principles will remain the same. So feel free to shoot me a message in the contact, the contact form down below with your thoughts and I'll definitely take a look at them and consider them and let you know what I think. That's really about it. Uh, it works basically the same way in two-dimensional mazes. I'll uh, probably touch on this again in a two-dimensional maze video, but the basic principle is the same. You just end up rotating this along the x-axis so it lines up with the, the 2D view. All right, I hope you're having a great day and you're ready for the next video. I'm starting to <clears throat> lose my voice here, so I might have to, might have to take a break. <laughs>